Nintendo, Nintendo, Nintendo. Oh, how you are doing so amazing this year. So Digitimes has come up with a new report. And they're just really you know, commenting on the facts of the situation. But essentially on Friday... Nintendo's stock rose 2.66%. And maybe by the time you listen to this, you know, end of day, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever, uh, the stock ends up rising even more or it falls a little bit. But overall, Nintendo's stock has risen 77% since the beginning of 2017. Uh, No doubt that the Nintendo Switch has played a huge role in that stock rise, despite the fact that many investors almost wanted Nintendo to abandon hardware and just go strictly mobile. And I'm sure their mobile games have, have something to do with that success as well. In fact, they were actually rising at the end of 2016, despite discontinuing the Wii U because of successes like Fire Emblem on, uh, on mobile devices. Plus, you had Super Mario Run came out. Uh, there was the NES Classic situation, etc. So Nintendo's had a lot of reasons to have their stock rise since the end of 2016. But what's interesting here is that they note that this is a 10-year high, as in this is the highest their stock has been in 10 years. Now, that is actually factually incorrect. <laughs> um, because if you look at this chart here, you'll see that Nintendo's stock... Uh, has not hit the Wii peak numbers, uh, which happened in 2008. So it obviously can't be a 10-year high because that would date back to 2000. That would date back to October of 2007. So it's not a 10-year high, but it is the highest it has been uh, since part of the Wii peak, and that would be October of 2008. So the stock is as high as it's ever been since October of 2008, which was part of the Wii peak. If you think about that, that's less than two years after the Wii came out that this current Nintendo's stock value has, has been that high. And this comes off the back of what seems to be the recent announcement that Nintendo has ramped up production by up to 2 million units per month and that Nintendo has a pending deal to release the Switch in China, which is one reason to keep that production ramped up. Even as they're catching up the demand, uh, they're anticipating high demand in China is essentially the gist here, especially since Nintendo appears to be partnering with Tencent, uh, who has like 200 million units uh, you know, market share in China. Uh, so yeah, Nintendo really wants to get in on that market. That's no surprise. PlayStation 4 and Xbox One are already there, and they've seen some success. The market has consistently been growing since their release. Uh, but Switch obviously has a chance, just like it does in Japan, to blow up because they're really big into mobile games in China. So, yeah, Nintendo is just flying high right now. And despite the error in the reporting, you know, it's not a 10-year high. It's like a, uh, I don't know, what would you call that? A, a nine-year high? Uh, yeah, probably a nine-year high because October 2008 to... Uh, October 2017, but still, this is really impressive that Nintendo is, that we're even talking about Nintendo in the spectrum of Wii and DS levels of success, because remember, a lot of people say, oh, the Wii, the Wii years, it's not just the Wii years, right, that stock value included the DS, so we're talking about two of Nintendo's most popular platforms, I mean, literally, their most popular platforms ever released at the same time, hitting their peaks, and right now, off a 3DS is kind of dwindling a little bit, and the high sales of Switch, you know, one single device being super, super successful this year, Nintendo is already back up to the Wii and DS levels of success in terms of their stock valuation. And that's just, that's insane for me to think. I mean, Nintendo's had an awesome first year of Switch. We just did a recent podcast episode, which you can click on the little eye up in the right-hand corner uh, and check that out, uh, where we talked about how the Switch got to where it is today, success-wise, and how it can keep that momentum going in the future and what's to come in 2018. And a lot of it, obviously, is a stellar game library, but I've also argued that the hardware itself is just extremely attractive to a lot of consumers. It just makes sense. It's not something that's confusing. It's something that has a desirability factor. And Nintendo doesn't always hit that right, right? Like the tablet you know, thing they did with Wii U obviously didn't hit with the consumers, but the Wiimote did hit with consumers. And now we have uh, the Switch being successful almost for the exact opposite reason the Wii was. The Wii was successful because it attracted people who had never gamed before, whereas the 
Switch is kind of bringing people who used to game or currently do game but don't game as much back because now Nintendo is offering a more convenient way to play console level gaming, whether you want to play it on your TV or on the go. And I know several people that only play their system docked and several people that only play it on the go. I'm one of the few people that I kind of take advantage of of the the docked and portable aspect. But that's the thing. The system has an appeal to two completely different markets. And even if uh, you think it got held back for handheld, uh, it it doesn't really matter because handheld has always been Nintendo's most successful market anyways. I mean, think about that. The Wii U sold 13 million. The 3DS is at 70 million. I mean, just put that in perspective. Nintendo's handheld market is always strong. And that 70 million units for 3DS is their worst selling handheld of all time. So keep that in perspective. Nintendo knows what they are doing. Uh, yeah, it, I, I'm just I'm I'm like really ecstatic for Nintendo. I know a lot of times we, we throw some shade and some criticism at some of the decisions they make, but this is one decision that I think we just need to be happy with. The Switch is a resounding success. It can get better. There are things that need to be fixed, even with hardware wise, how the Joy Cons connect. You know, it's a plastic clip. It should be metal. Uh, because it can wear down. There's the kickstand could be better or and better located. Uh, there, there's some general improvements they could make to the Switch overall. They could release an XL version that gets rid of the bezel and has a 1080p screen. Uh, but they're not going to do that until prices come down and they can maintain that $300 price point. But I'm I'm just thrilled. We got Super Mario Odyssey coming out. Uh, we're, we have a giveaway actually right now for a copy of Super Mario Odyssey. Open up to the entire world. You can go down in the description below to check that out. And, yeah, that's really all I have to say. You guys let me know what you think on Nintendo getting back to Wii and DS levels of success right now uh, with a platform that we still don't have updated sales figures for. Now, we will get it on October 30th. The last we heard was, like, 4.7 million units, you know, to to be hitting the the peak years of Wii and DS. Uh, It feels like it didn't need to be hitting a lot more units than that, but maybe it is. I don't know. Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel Rufflejans from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more content, and I will catch you in the next one.